What is up friends, welcome back for another movie reaction. It's only fitting that right after Airplane we jump into another classic comedy with A Clockwork Orange. Obviously not though, quite the opposite type of film. I don't know a lot about it, but I'm kind of apprehensive for this watch through more so than maybe any other just because I've heard that it's pretty brutal from the few people I've talked to about it. And I think the only screenshot that I've really seen from it is some guy getting his eye like pulled open not ripped open quite but just looks really uncomfortable but I'm gonna trust all of your recommendations in choosing this movie and also the fact that it's Kubrick so I'm sure technically it's going to be really impressive and hopefully I can find some enjoyment or appreciation in it again not 100% sure what the subject matter is just know it's brutal and so hopefully you all enjoy watching along with me for this one if you do definitely consider leaving a thumbs up it helps the video reach a lot more people helps the channel grow and of course you can check out the full length reaction on my patreon link for that in the description below but without further ado let's go ahead and jump into a clockwork orange <laughs> okay we're just starting with a blank red screen soundtrack is excellent though i'm a fan so far this feels like a very kubrick type opening I feel like this guy is staring into my soul right now, but I do recognize him because of the extended lashes on the one eye. Is that blood on those guys? I can't quite tell, but this is quite the opening shot right here. Already the camera work is excellent. There was me, that is Alex, and my three droogs. The Corova milk bar sold milk plus. This would sharpen you up and make you ready for a bit of the old ultra violence. <laughs> Oh jeez, there we go, man. Are we getting straight into the violence with this one? It's quite the freaking room right there, my goodness. One thing I could never stand was to see a filthy, dirty old drunkie howling away at the filthy songs of his fathers. Oh no, man. Are they gonna freaking kill this guy? I'm kind of worried. Spare some cutter, me brothers. <laughs> Do me in, you bastard. We don't want to live anyway. <laughs> Oh gosh, dude, they're just laying into him, poor guy. Are these the people we're gonna be following? Because they don't seem that good. Well, if it isn't fat, stinking Billy Joe, come and get one in the yarbles, you eunuch jelly thou. <laughs> oh shoot, bro, are we gonna have a bit of a war between these two groups? I like his old English type language. Whoa, man, quite some stunts here early on. So far, it's just absolute chaos in the movie, that is. The Durango 95 purred away real horror show. A nice, warm, vibrate feeling all through your gutty woods. <laughs> I love the vocabulary of this guy. He's saying some words I've never heard of. What we were after now was the old surprise visit. That was a real kick and good for laughs and lashings of the old ultra violent the way the soundtrack has just been kind of prominent almost the entire movie so far makes it feel almost like a play instead of just a typical film i don't know if that's the intention it's also kind of the nature of the soundtrack who on earth could that be my guy if you know what's good for you you won't open that door who is it can you please help there's been a terrible accident can i please use your telephone for an ambulance we don't have a telephone you'll have to go somewhere else oh man this is tense i know what's gonna happen if they open that door or at least i think i do probably gonna beat him to death well i suppose you better let him in i'm sorry but we don't usually let strangers in, in the <laughs> oh my gosh that poor lady and soon that poor man they've amped up the production as well with their masks what a glorious <laughs> Oh my gosh, whoever's laughing sounds like the freaking Joker, but it's strange seeing him save a girl in the last scene and then torture one now. So I don't think their intention last time was to save him. It was just to beat up the other group. And I'm singing. Man, knowing how many takes Kubrick likes to do, I really hope that that was the first try because it'd be terrible to have to pick all that up. <laughs> Oh man, 
man, thank goodness they cut away before anything else happened or they showed us anything. I didn't want to watch that. But I mean, they showed us enough. We all know what went down. She suddenly came with a burst of singing. And it was like for a moment, oh my brothers, I felt all the malanky little hairs on my plot standing endwise. <laughs> This guy's good at creepy smiles, my gosh. If I see that, I'm running as far as I can the opposite way. It was a bit from The Glorious Ninth by Ludwig van. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the only satisfying thing that guy's done so far. Man's taken a liking to whoever this singer is. I'm not your brother no more and wouldn't want to be. Do watch that old dinner to continue to be online, thou dost wish. Great bolts of your block host to you. <laughs> I feel like I need translation for this dialogue sometimes. I can kind of get the gist of what they're saying, but it's kind of confusing. Who just keeps a snake in a drawer like that, dude? And also, are those actual people's eyeballs there? Nice freaking zoom in on his face right there. Bliss and heaven. As I slew shit, I knew such lovely pictures. What is this? I have no idea what we're watching. But since it's Kubrick, I'm sure there's some deep meaning to it. Maybe those are just his fantasies. Where exactly is it? He goes to work of evenings. Like he says, it's mostly odd things he does. Helping like, here and there as it might be. <laughs> I wouldn't call any of what they're doing helping quite the opposite, in fact. Just as odd as all the scenes and everything so far, I feel like the set dressing and the set design is quite odd as well. Hi, 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 Mr. Deltoid. I met your mother on the way to work, yes? She said something about a pain somewhere, hence not at school, yes? <laughs> This guy's voice inflection is rather unsettling. I don't think he's up to any good. Do watch out, little Alex, because next time it's not going to be the corrective school. It's going to be the body place and all my work ruined. I don't know if I like the sound of that, but I'm not exactly sure what he means by it. Warning you, little Alex. The one man in this sore and sick community who wants to save you from yourself. Everybody in this movie is so strange, dude. What the heck? I mean, this guy was giving off weird vibes initially, but I did not expect that. Keep your handsome young proboscis out of the dirt. Do I make myself clear? As an unmuddied lake, sir. Clear as an azure sky of deepest summer. <laughs> I like this angle, we're just focusing on him, not even seeing Alex. Seems like a bit of a threat, though, that he's given. This is quite the interesting shop right here. Love the tracking shot, though. Excuse me, brother. I ordered this two weeks ago. Can you see if it's arrived yet? <laughs> is that 2001 A Space Odyssey right there? Kubrick giving a little bit of a nod to himself. This feels quite futuristic. Hi, hi, hi there. See you all here. He have arrived. Hooray. Welly, 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 well. <laughs> I like that line right there. I should start saying that to people. You sure the pain is gone? You sure you don't be happy about your bed? <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely something off about that guy right there. I don't know if they're planning something or what. Let's get things nice and sparkling clear. This sight, if I may call it such, does not become you, my little brothers. <laughs> <laughs> this man can go intimidation mode real quick. The man in the chair's not looking too excited anymore. No more picking on dim part of the new way. What's this about a new way? We go around shop cresting and the like, coming out with a pitiful rooker full of money each. <laughs> I mean, because the dialogue's so strange, I'm not exactly sure what they're saying. Are they talking about robbing places, though? That's what it sounds like to me. Georgie the General saying what we should do. There was a window open with a stereo on, and I vidied right at once what to do. Ouch, bro. Freaking rocked him, dude. What the heck? This man turned on him. Interesting use of the slow motion, though. No, dude. He's gonna freaking stab him in the arm or worse. It's messed up.
Oh, okay, that's not as bad as I was thinking it was gonna be. It just seems like a small cut. Still would be pretty painful, though. There's been a terrible accident! There's a telephone in the public house! It's a matter of life and death! My friend's lying in the middle of the road, bleeding to death! Oh, gosh, it is a pretty good tactic they've got. I hope she doesn't fall for it, though, like the last couple. Very well, madam. I'll uh, try and get help at the pub, then. Thank you very much. Good night. Oh, certainly they're not giving up yet. Are they just waiting for her to break and open the door? Thinking that they weren't trouble after all? Or are they just gonna find a back entrance? Damn it, bend down. I'm gonna get in that window and open the front door. I don't know how the heck they're gonna pull that off. That's up so dang high. Bradford Police Station. A young man rang the bell asking to use the telephone. The words he used sounded very like what was quoted in the papers in connection with the writer and his wife. Oh, she's smart, man. She figured it out pretty quick. And if the cops know about it, they might actually get caught if they go in here. Yes! Hi, hi, hi there. I'll teach you to break into real people's houses. What kind of odd fight is this, man? The music just makes it so much more ridiculous. The camera angles are also strange choices. It works, though. <laughs> Dude, that insert right there, what the heck? Did not expect that. He didn't just kill her, did he? Come on, let's go, the police are coming. Under the doogie. Oh my gosh, dude. The pranks never stop with these dudes. I can't see! Yo, what? They did that just to get back at him for everything he'd done to them. At least that's what I'm guessing. Well, they're in room B, sir. We're interrogating the prisoner now. Perhaps you'd care to come inside. Sorry. Dear, dear, this boy does look a mess. Oh gosh, man. They ruined him already. I'm not sure how much hope Mr. Deltoid's gonna be. Speak up for me, sir, for I'm not so bad. I was led on by the treachery of others, sir. <laughs> you are now a murderer, little Alex. Oh my gosh, there couldn't have been a creepier way to say that. So she is dead after all, ruthless. This is the real weepy and like tragic part of the story beginning. Sentenced to 14 years in Stager number 84F. 14 years, dude. That's crazy. I mean, he had been doing some terrible stuff, so I can't say it's undeserved. Especially if she really did die after that hit. Are you able to see the white line painted on the floor? Yes, sir. Then your toes belong on the other side of it! <laughs> no pleasantries here, man. Just laying into him already. I have no idea where this could go from here. I wasn't expecting a prison portion. One half bar of chocolate. One bunch of keys on the white metal ring. One packet of cigarettes. Two plastic ball pens. Very interesting that we're just hanging here for this whole scene. No cuts or anything. And making us feel like we're being sent to prison as well. Just trapped with Alex. Do you wear eyeglasses or contact lenses? No, sir. Have you been receiving medical treatment for any serious illness? No, sir. One great thing about this that I just noticed is that the music has completely disappeared when it was almost constant while he was out of jail. That definitely helps make this more unsettling and unpleasant. A fireball spinning in their screaming guts! I know. Just a freaking disrespectful group right here. But I have to say, so far, this film is not as brutal as I thought it was going to be coming into it. But I feel like we still have a lot to go. Maybe I was just building it up to worse than it was in my mind. It had not been edifying being in this hellhole and human zoo for two years now. Being kicked and toll chopped by brutal warders. Interesting, man. We skipped two years into the future. He still looks rather similar, so prison hasn't ruined him quite yet. Father... I have tried, have I not? Well, you have, my son. I've done my best, have I not? I've never been guilty of any institutional infraction, have I, Father? <laughs> Is he expecting that he's gonna get let out on good behavior? If it's only been two years, it's definitely not gonna happen that quick. Is there something troubling you, my son? It's about this new thing they're all talking about, Father. About this new treatment that gets you out of prison in no time at all. Where did you hear about this? <laughs> oh, man, he didn't say there is no treatment, so it must be something real. Is that where we're gonna start getting into the brutal stuff? Sounds 
a bit sketchy. How about putting me in for this new treatment? You are referring to the Ludovico technique. All I know that it gets you out quickly and makes sure you never get back in again. Man, that would be some treatment if it really does that successfully. I would be kind of scared just reading that or hearing about it. I have heard that there are very serious dangers involved. I just want to be good. I want for the rest of my life to be one act of goodness. <laughs> For some reason, I don't really believe him. I think he's just doing this to get out at all costs. Best dealt with on a purely curative basis. Kill that criminal reflex. You're absolutely right, sir. What crime did you commit? The accidental killing of a person, sir. He brutally murdered a woman's heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple different interpretations on what happened there. I'm inclined to believe the latter wasn't very accidental. He'll do. I want his record sent to me. This vicious young hoodlum will be transformed out of all recognition. <laughs> That's a terrifying line right there. I'm worried what they're gonna do to him. But he got exactly what he wanted. Sign this. Don't read it, sign it! it! says that you are willing to have the residue of your sentence commuted to submission to the Ludovico treatment. Oh man, there's no getting out now. You signed it. He seems pretty committed, though. The next morning, I was taken to the Ludovico medical facility, and I felt a malanky bit sad having to say goodbye to the old stager. Jeez, man, I'm kind of nervous to see this procedure. I think Alex is a little bit too excited for this. You'll have to watch this one. A right brutal bastard he has been. And will be again, in spite of all his sucking up to the prison chaplain. Oh, I think we can manage things. Out of everyone in that prison, that guy can see right through all of Alex's facade he's putting up. I don't feel like two years is a really long time in prison to change fully. What exactly is the treatment here going to be then? It's quite simple, really. We're just going to show you some films. You mean like going to the pictures? Something like that. <laughs> oh, jeez, that delivery is rough. It's kind of odd, though, man, just showing him some movies. I don't know how that'll work. I was bound up in a straitjacket, and McGulliver was strapped to a headrest with, like, wires running away from it. Then they clamped, like, lidlocks on the eyes. Oh, man, this is what I'd seen before. <laughs> That's so uncomfortable to look at. And it looks like he's really having that done to him, the actor. <laughs> The first film was a very good professional piece of cine. The sounds were a real horror show. You could slushy the screams and moans. Interesting. I assume that they're working him up to something else, though. All the time I was watching, I was beginning to get very aware of not feeling all that well. But I tried to forget this, concentrating on the next film. <laughs> Dude, that's such an uncomfortable image. The actor looks like he's in such pain. I assume he's doing that intentionally, though. I began to feel really sick. And even if I tried to move my glass balls about, I still could not get out of the line of fire of this picture. Oh my gosh, and the fact they're putting so many eye drops, that's so wild. Whatever they're doing is finally starting to work. Very soon now, the drug will cause the subject to experience a death-like paralysis with deep feelings of terror. Whoa, bro, that's so extreme, dude. I think Alex is gonna regret this big time. It was horrible. Of course it was horrible. Violence is a very horrible thing. That's what you're learning now. Your body's learning it. It's a very interesting technique, but I also love the angle they're shooting her at, just bathed in white around her. I had truly done my best morning and afternoon to play it their way and sit like a horror show cooperative malchick in the chair of torture. Man, credit to this actor for going through these scenes what commitment that'd be so terrible then i noticed what music it was that cracked and boomed it was ludwig van ninth symphony fourth movement <laughs> bro that close-up right there my gosh they're ruining his favorite music stop it stop it please i beg you i'm sorry alex this is for your own good it's not fair i should feel ill when i hear lovely lovely ludwig <laughs> That's such an interesting way that this is going, that the worst thing happening to him is listening to Ludwig in this circumstance. I've learned the lesson, son! I'm cured! You are not cured yet, boy. Less than a fortnight now, you will be a free man. <laughs> Another great cut right there, I love it. He signed the papers, he's locked in, nothing he can do. At this stage, we introduce the subject himself. Undrugged, unhypnotized. 
Tomorrow, we send him out with confidence into the world again. Whoa, what the heck, man? We skipped forward all that time. I thought we were going to be stuck watching him in that setup for an excruciating amount of time. Our party promised to restore law and order. This pledge is now about to become a reality. Man, if Alex screws up, he's going to ruin this entire organization by proving them inefficient. Our necks are out a long way on this. I have complete faith in Bronsky. Hello, heap of dirt. You don't wash much, do you? Judging by the horrible smell. <laughs> interesting are they going to try and provoke him to act out and he's just supposed to keep himself reserved and everything i do this and that and this because i don't like your horrible type do i if you want to stop please do man he's staying steady so far so is the end goal just to change people to be completely docile if they get attacked is it that you well i want you to lick it would you believe your faithful friend and long-suffering narrator pushed out his red yazzy to lick the grasny vonny boots oh that's so gross dude i can't believe he did it interesting though that they chose to have him lick a shoe because isn't the term like boot licker someone who just kind of like bows down and sucks up to authority Gosh, I feel like a few people in the audience are extra excited for this demonstration. The music's pretty wild. First thing that flashed into my Gulliver was that I'd like to have her right down there on the floor with the old in out. Real savage. <laughs> Quick as a shot came the sickness. Interesting, man. So he just gets physically ill every time. That is a pretty effective method then. It's clearly working so far. The boy has no real choice. The fear of physical pain drove him to that act of self-abasement. I was just about to mention that a second ago, but I wanted to wait till the scene ends, but now's a good a time to mention as any. I kind of feel the same way. He doesn't really have the same agency as he had before. We are concerned only with cutting down crime, relieving the ghastly congestion in our prisons. He will be your true Christian, ready to turn the other cheek. There's <laughs> some great filmmaking right here. It almost feels like we've got the angel and the devil on each side of his shoulder. Hi, hi, hi there, Mark Pienan. How are you, love? Nice to see you. Oh, hello. Oh, what a surprise. Give him fit. Oh, hi. <laughs> Dad's still a little bit worried about him, clearly. Kind of interesting. I don't know if it's intentional, but in the beginning, we'd been seeing so many paintings and pictures that were rather lewd. But now the ones in this room are more modest. There's a strange fella sitting on the sofa, munchy munchy in lumpticks of toast. That's Joe. He rents your room. How is he going to react, man? I'm a little bit worried. Still got his creepy smile, kind of. I've heard about you. I know what you've done. You're back to make life a misery for your lovely parents once more. Is that it? Yo! Yo! Oh, man, he was kind of stopped right there. He was ready to punch him, though. Maybe that stuff really did work. <laughs> Are you all right, lad? Shh, dad. <gasps> Oh, it's disgusting. Man, it's so extreme. This man can never have any sort of self-defense, though, either, so it's kind of bad at the same time. We can't just say to Jota, get out. Well, it wouldn't be fair for me to go off and leave you two to the tender mercies of this young monster. Let him go and find a room somewhere else. Oh, well, his mom seems to be taking this pretty hard right now. I think she'd rather have him stay, but she's outnumbered right now. I've suffered, and everybody wants me to go on suffering. You've made others suffer. It's only right that you should suffer proper. Now look what you've gone and done to your mother. Jeez, man, heavy stuff. It's also very interesting that Alex was kind of painted as this awful character in the beginning, so it's kind of conflicting to sympathize with him at all. Oh man, I just got an idea. He's obviously been kicked out of his own home, but if he can't find anywhere else to stay, he might end up like that homeless guy in the beginning. That'd be quite the circle of justice. Can you spare some cut on me, brother? Whoa, man, it's the same guy from the beginning. I was just talking about him. Is he gonna actually do a good act? Thanks, brother. Oh shoot, did he just recognize him? He's got a good memory if that's the case. What would he even do? Be the hokey Floyd. 
I never forget a face. Be gone. Leave me alone, brother. I've never seen you before. Oh my gosh, and now he's just starting to get sick already, and they haven't even started fighting, really. A sea of dirty, smelly old men. It was old age having a go at youth. It seemed better to be hit at like that than want to sick and feel that horrible pain. That's so crazy, man. He's just a sitting duck constantly. Can't imagine how long they've been waiting to do that, though. Get back at him. Oh no! Whoa! What? Bro, are you kidding me? They're cops of all things! No way! I don't believe it! No magic, little Alex! <laughs> a job for two? Who are now of job age? The police! <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what a turn of events! Are you kidding me? Alex is just a shell of himself, and those dudes who were doing the exact same stuff are now in a position of power. <laughs> For what I did in the past, I've been punished. Punished. <laughs> I've been cured. cured yeah. I love this shot and combo with the music, but what the heck are they gonna do to him? They still hate him after all these years? Ah, so brutal. It's not quite what I thought it was. I thought it was just like a well, but that's still pretty horrific. Jeez, dude, how did he hold his breath for that long? That's insane. Impressive acting. I can't believe those guys just got away with everything, though. It was home I was wanting, and it was home I came to, brothers, not realizing in the state I was in where I was and had been before. Yeah, isn't this the house that he broke into with the other guys initially? He's just experiencing all the past. <gasps> <laughs> this man's still typing away. Give him credit. He stays consistent. And he fixed the bookshelf as well. Please. Oh man, quite the entrance. I wonder if the typing dude's gonna recognize him though. Or the writer, I guess I should say. Shoot, bro, he's in a wheelchair now. Did they do that to him? That would be pretty awful. There was your faithful narrator, suddenly realizing where he was. I knew he would not remember me. I and my so-called droogs wore our masks. Oh, that's right, I forgot about it. He's freaking lucky for that. Are you not the poor victim of this horrible new technique? That's exactly who I am, what I am, sir. By God, you've been sent here by Providence. Whoa, man, he's actually on his side. That's crazy, what a turn of events. He can be the most potent weapon imaginable to ensure that the government is not returned to the forthcoming election. Oh, interesting, man. So he's just got political motivations. Alex is just caught in the middle of everything. At this time, he Chase. Wait a second, man. Weren't they singing when they broke in here before? Is he gonna recognize the singing voice? I don't remember what song it was, but is it the same one? Oh my gosh, dude, that camera angle, yikes. It's absolutely horrifying. Does that mean he did remember him? Food, all right. Great, sir, great. Try the wine. Thank you, sir. Cheers. <laughs> I'm kind of scared that he did something to the wine or if something else is going wrong. But after seeing that other guy's strength, you can't even escape. Could manhandle you. Won't you join me? No. Ah, very good. Call us, sir. Very nice little number, sir. <laughs> And that's a relief, but maybe it takes a minute to do something. In addition to your being conditioned against acts of sex and violence, you've inadvertently been conditioned against music. I'm very fond of music, especially Beethoven. Ludwig van Beethoven. <laughs> yeah, make sure you get the whole name for sure. Give him his due respect. That would suck to be turned off music. It's not all music, just the nine. All I can think about is like trying to snuff it. I just want to die peacefully with no <laughs> that would be ideal, but based off everything we've seen, I don't think that's a possibility for him. I can't see much in the future, and I feel that any second, something terrible is going to happen to me. <laughs> Wait, what, dude? The timing? So there was something with the food or the wine. And they're in on it too, these new people.
bro and they're just gonna freaking torture him with the symphony now he gave them all the information they needed That face, bro, he is loving this way too much. What happens if you never stop playing it? Certainly there's got to be a point where he stops feeling pain. Suddenly I did what I had to do and what I had wanted to do, and that was to do myself in, to snuff it. No way, he's just gonna kill himself? Is he even allowed to? Because violence makes him sick as well. Yo, he actually did jump. I thought he was gonna like be forced back in by the sickness. It's not the biggest fall though, so maybe he's still alive. I jumped on my brothers, but I did not snuff it. I came back to life after a long black, black gap. My gosh, man, he looks so terrible right now. I don't know where the story's gonna go now. I'm Dr. Taylor. What are we gonna do? Talk about me sex life. Oh no, I'm going to show you some slides. You're going to tell me what you think about. Oh man, please don't tell me they're gonna be some violent stuff because that's gonna make him feel terrible. I've been having this very nasty dream. I like all these doctors were playing around with me Gulliver. Do you think it means anything? Patients who've sustained the kind of injuries you have often have dreams of this sort. I feel like that's a dodge right there. It looked initially like she knew exactly what he's talking about. Did they experiment on him again? The boy you always quarreled with is seriously ill. Well, Mine is a blank, and I'll smash your face for you, your blockos. <laughs> what the heck? These are very strange responses right here. They definitely did something to him. You sold me a crummy watch. Stick it up your ass! <laughs> you can do whatever you like with these. Eggy wags. Smash them. Oh, interesting. Maybe this is just showing us that he's not affected by violent speech. He's not getting sick or anything like that. Good to see you on the mend. You have had an extremely dis... Let me help you with that, shall I? We tried to help you. An inquiry will place the responsibility where it belongs. <laughs> Are you sure that you're not responsible? I feel like you played a pretty big role. We never wished you harm. There are certain people who wanted to use you for a political end. They would have been glad to have you dead. The fact that Alex is turning into just a political pawn for both sides here at the end makes me feel like he is just representative of society as a whole. This government has lost a lot of popularity because of you. You can be instrumental in changing the public's verdict. Do I make myself clear? As an unmodded light friend. <laughs> Second time he's said that in the movie, but that's crazy that he has to build them up once again after what they did to him. <laughs> what is going on right now? Oh, they're just press so that the public now thinks that those are the good guys. What the heck is this man? His mind went to a very odd place. I was cured, all right. What in the world, man? <laughs> I have no idea how to interpret that ending right there, but I guess part of it is just kind of what I was feeling earlier with the images and him saying the response is that he can envision that stuff or engage in that stuff and not have a negative response. I also like the last line is, I was cured all right. We kind of went full circle there throughout the movie. This may be the most confusing Kubrick movie I've seen though so far as far as understanding the narrative and what it's trying to say there at the end. As expected though, extremely well shot and edited and all of that, and well acted by the main actor. He killed it, especially considering some of the things he had to sit through. And some of the meaning could be what I was already saying there at the end. And I guess another interpretation could also just be how the interpretation of being cured changed throughout the movie and somewhat depended on who was speaking or the circumstance you were in, but I definitely feel like it is a big commentary of some sort on society. Just not sure immediately after my first watch that I could put it all into words, but I think I only have a few more Kubrick films to go, so I'll definitely get to those eventually. Well, this film still had its fair share of uncomfortable and unsettling and hard to watch moments, but it was not quite as brutal as my mind had pictured it being before I got into it, because after what a few people had said and what I'd read, I felt like it was going to be 
the most hard to watch film I've ever seen, but that was thankfully not the case. And one other thought that I just had, kind of in line with some of the things I was saying during the credits there, is how in the beginning, Alex as a character is beating people up and lustful and all these bad characteristics and so eventually he gets put in prison and the initial cure is to try and remove him from those thoughts and ideologies and make him a more productive and non-violent member of society because that's what helps the narrative at the time but then later on at the end there he was kind of released from that and kind of going back to his old ways if I'm interpreting it right even to where that guy said he was going to give him a surprise at the end which maybe that's what the last shot is supposed to symbolize maybe that's what was waiting for him after the pictures were being taken and so the curing there is almost the opposite of what they were doing initially and it's the same people doing it as well but because it fits their political narrative at the time for Alex to be in favor of them that's the path they chose and so maybe the movie's just kind of a commentary on how the government system the political system is structured to how things don't necessarily matter in their just raw morality but more so how the people in power interpret them and how they want to use them to favor their platform or something like that that's my i guess main guess on the interpretation of what the film's supposed to mean right now you guys can let me know if i'm way off base if it's something else or if i'm kind of on the right path but i feel like this is definitely a film where you have to kind of study it a bit more think about it more before you really understand what kubrick was going for but maybe there's not even a real definitive answer and it's just kind of left up to the audience's interpretation which i like as well just kind of everyone gets it's their own meaning from it but as I've already mentioned the filmmaking was great the technical side as expected with all of Kubrick's films is top-notch the music as well the soundtrack I really loved whether it was classical music that obviously was pulled from other artists or what I assume is original soundtrack for the film I felt it all worked in kind of adding to the atmosphere of certain scenes and for as kind of slow I guess you could say as a lot of the scenes were moving a lot of it just dialogue or just spending a lot of time in one particular space I feel like it was paced really well because it never felt like it was dragging on or it was lasting too long I felt like the runtime was perfect for it so gotta compliment that as well but considering how apprehensive I was coming into this one definitely not the experience I was expecting after all and so hopefully you all enjoyed watching along with me for this one really looking forward to your thoughts and comments about the film what it means especially the ending and whatnot so definitely consider leaving a thumbs up if you did enjoy look forward to seeing you all in the next one though and until then peace